So, if you remember um, last week, Andy came and shared about the uniqueness, how we are each unique. And the video, the short video is up online at the moment, so you can kind of get to see it um, and have a look at it, but how we're all unique. Do you believe it? Yes. Oh, all unique. It's a pretty lovely one, sorry. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Funny that, I think the same! <laughs> But we're all unique. And what we're going to do this morning, we're going to have some um, stories. I'm going to actually start off with um, Acts 1, verse 8. So Jesus has been with his disciples. Uh, they've done all this stuff. He's been with them 40 days. He's been with them 3 years, 40 days. Uh, and then just before he goes and leaves them, he says... They said to him, so now we've done all that, are you going to restore the kingdom of heaven? Kingdom of Israel. So after you've done all that, and now we're going to go defeat these Romans. We're going we're to now take power back. And Jesus says, um, it's not for you to know those times. So in our uniqueness, are we willing to walk this earth and maybe not know the times? So when we talked about the uh, mantles, the four mantles, four coverings, it was given as a, um, a picture, a vision at Christmas. We shared it in New Year. One of them was power. And I said to the Lord, well, Lord, actually, you've got to have the presence of God before you have the power. And the Lord said, do you remember Moses? Do you remember Moses? He was in the wilderness. What did he see first? What did you say? He saw a burning bush. He did not even know God was in that. He saw the power of God before he saw the presence, or knew the presence. Because when he got to, to, closer, to, God told him, take your shoes off. This is a holy place. So in your uniqueness, as you go through the week, are you open to the power of God being released to you before you even aware the presence of God? Because then Jesus says, it is not for you to know the times and dates the Father set before by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. What He was saying was, you will be my witnesses in your city, in your town, um, in Judea, which is their kind of nation, um, and then to Samaria, oh, the ones we don't like, the people who kind of rub us up the wrong way. We'd like to, you know, cross the street when we see them coming. <laughs> and then to the ends of the earth. In that uniqueness, Robert's going to share some insights. That's why you may wonder why these musical instruments up here, they have a story of uh, their own. Because in that uniqueness, God shows his power and presence. But I'm going to ask um, Penny, will you come and share your... Your dream. What the Lord? Oh, sorry, I should have okay. it. I read this out um, on the 15th of January in 2008. Show me the one, dude. Okay, thank you. I wrote this out on the 15th of January in 2005. And I put it in Alan Smith's pigeonhole, and oh, I don't think anyone needs to know that one. Anyway, and I read it, and I wanted to share this. A few months ago, a member of our family who lives nearby asked if she and her husband could ask a couple who had a terrier from the same litter as theirs to meet in our somewhat larger garden, so that the two little dogs could renew their acquaintance and also have a good romp around. The meeting took place on a warm, sunny day, and the two couples looked on fondly as their respective terriers raced around the lawn. My husband and I went out and joined the visitors, but for ten minutes we stood unnoticed and seemingly ignored. Eventually, feeling rather exasperated, I said to my son-in-law, do you think you could introduce us? A flurry of embarrassed exchanges took place, and then normal conversation flowed. 
That evening, when I was telling the Lord how mint I had felt at the lack of manners, he said quietly, that's how I feel when you don't introduce me. Sometimes we can be concerned about introducing the Lord, but know the power, God's given this power to you. And that introduction can be by voice, or it can be by the way you show love, sacrificially, whatever that would look like, where you care for families or whatever it would be. But how does that work for each of us? Because we are unique. Therefore, how will we share the Lord? In a unique way. So I can't say, right, Judy, you've got to be like Kenny and speak loud. Um, you got to, well, I don't run so much now. But you got to do this, you got to be tall and bald. You get, whoa, 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 no, no, no. Each one, the children, ourselves, each one is unique. I want you to grab hold of that. Is unique. When we were looking to move from India to a, a, a I think, a, was it an India or America? I remember, maybe Britain. Um, and Karis came up to us, and we were wondering about it. And Karis came up to us and said, God says, she was little, tiny, she said, it's okay to move now. <laughs> now, I've heard lots of pastors, I've heard lots of teachers. Um, best one, obviously, is Lindsay. But I've heard lots and lots. But do you know those words from Karis? in the uniqueness of who she was, rippled with me through time. Those few words, we have heard lots and lots of teaching. The uniqueness of each one of us, as we share uh, that reality of Jesus, cuts through all kinds of um, confusion and uncertainty, and it can really be a... a, a, a Something that individuals hold on to. So I encourage us in our uniqueness. Lord said to Penny, for Penny to share. We say that to each of us, for us to share. What would that, that look like? That's very unique. Robert, do you want to come on up? Um, so Robert's going to share some insights. I'll give him a stool. Because even the insights has a bit of a picture. Now Robert is arranging all these different... Um, not all of them, he's created many of these musical instruments and he'll right. let you know what they are. Yeah. How <laughs> they <laughs> impacted the uniqueness of God. Mm -hmm. I'm user friendly. Kevin. Right. Kevin. Okay. What Logan's name? Oh, when he came, oh wow, look at those! Okay. Okay. He came over. Oh, that's excellent. Can I show it, buddy? He came over and he kissed the cross. Oh, All of them are unique. Well done. It's unique. Well done. Be still in your show. I am not going. I am going to show. So, right. Thank you. I was blessed when he came over and he kissed the cross. Did you see? Oh, yeah. He did. Yeah. Well, Robert, I'll stay here with you. Always going to stay. Um, you know why he's here. <laughs> well, there's a football match we want to see at some point today, isn't there? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, brilliant, Robert. <laughs> I was even more to go along with you rather than... No, no, no. no. <laughs> if, you, if you notice, if you, if you notice on the front, there's a sheet. There is, so, and it's... What does it say? Say, Kevin. It says, special sheet police. That's right, there you go. So I just just give them a the job. Um, Come on, tell us about these musical instruments and your journey. This piece of another one. Okay, right. So this is a journey over the last about eight weeks. Well, why eight weeks? Well, eight weeks. So um, we went down to Dorset and uh, on a short break from our camper van for a couple of days and. Uh, at the time, I had, I didn't really know, I had a really bad abscess in my back and uh, it was causing me quite a bit of pain. But we were away in Dorset and that was great. And uh, one day we went to Wareham because it was raining and we walked around Wareham and I went to the local church and dragged my lovely unbelieving wife into the church and she said, oh, oh boring. And, uh, 
And then we went off down through the town. And she said, I've got an art gallery to go and see. It's a really wacky place. So we went to this art gallery. And in this art gallery, the woman kept saying to me, you need to go upstairs. You need to go upstairs. And I uh, can't be bothered. And uh, she was really tired, you know. And um, anyway, so I thought, OK. So I went up these steps, steps up this old warehouse place. And I wandered around and wandered around. And um, there was a stand, so it was this. And it's um, had a bit of paper hanging on it, and it says, I've made this out of an old wine box, a two bottle wine box. Oh, it's interesting, so I struggled as I said, it's really quite good, you know. Oh, that's a really nice sound. Um, how much is it? Oh, 48 pounds. Oh, dear. And um, so I thought, no, you know, buy it, buy it. So I didn't know whether to buy it. I kept on. So, um, okay, I'll buy it. Trust. And so um, I bought this thing. And um, Sue thought I'd lost my marbles because, you know, it was a bit crude. I've done it up a bit and I put a pick up at it. Things and the bridge was in the wrong place, so I had to come off and go back on the stuff. Lovely action. And um, it's, all, it's all like nailed together. <laughs> Chuck made it in his shed, I think, where I make my stuff. Anyway, I'm walking up back through the town and I have this doubt. Have I done the right thing? And I'm walking along the middle. And there's a bloke up a ladder and he goes, Oi! Play us a song then, mate. So, oh great, it's very folky in it, my daughter plays in a folk band. And I said, oh, I don't know if I've done the right thing. He said, you have. He said, that's so unusual, it's so original as that, you've done the right thing. So is it unique? It's totally unique. Where have you, have you seen anything like that? And it's got like a brass in the middle of it, of a, of a stag. So I'm still going along, still got a lot down. You know, walking along. It's the main high street, Sue's gone to the red shop, awakened outside, got this on, put it down on the table. Man comes up to me and says, What have you got there? I said, oh. I said, I've got a guitar, or I've made up a wine box. <gasps> he said, Play it, that's right. What a unique sound, isn't that great? You won't regret behind that. I said, oh. I said, Are you into music? He said, I am. He said, uh, I sing madrigals. I said, where do you do that? He said, well, my lunch hour in that church at the end of the road. So I wandered up to this old church at the end of the street and where it's like a medieval church. And all the way up, I thought, oh, I've got to phone my members of my band, Winsong, and get some music going. And we need to do the creed. So I'm wandering up, I'm going to go, get to this church, walk in, and there's a couple of people in there, one's on a computer, and, and I look around, I thought, why am I here? Now on the wall, engraved in stone, was a creed. And I've just been talking to somebody about it, and I thought, all oh, right, I give in, I should have bought it, you know. So, that's that one. So I, I took it back, and um, that was that. Number one, that starts the ball rolling in our testimony. And then, I go to a prayer meeting. Um, was this before or after your back? Well, this is all before my back, okay? It's all before my back, so I'm wandering around, trying to join the family. Still got it, still got it. And um, I go to prayer meeting at uh, St. Stephen's, the Pyramid Church up in um, Upper Basildon. And I'm um, coming back from there, going, oh, okay. and uh, there's a shop on the Oxford Road called Music Man. And I know the guy that I've been known him years. I thought, I'll drop in and I'll see him. You know, see how he's getting on. Should I, should I? I've got a few minutes. So I dropped in. And he said, how are you getting on, Robert? I said, all right. I said, I bought flipping wine box guitars. Are you in the box guitars? And I said, not really. I mean, I just bought it like right? boom, boom. And um, I thought, what's he asking me for? He puts his hand in the window and he puts his hand. And this is a cigar box. Oh, you should get them to guess. <laughs> oh, well, they're never getting them to guess. It's a cigar box. It's a cigar box. <laughs> and inside, because I've had it apart, inside, is the cigar box. It's a cigar box. He's done it remote. And look, the back was nailed on and one thing is... 
He said, an electric guitar. I won't play it because it's really loud and rocky. Um, I was playing it earlier on. And um, it was fantastic to play. He said, I'm getting to that amp over there, you know, really loud. It's rocking away on it. And he said, you should buy that. And I said, oh, should I? I said, how much is it? He said, 75 pounds. Look at it. I didn't know at the time what I was doing. So I went away and I said, I'm going to try that. I'm not, I'm not having that. So I went, got in the van, got to go back and buy it. I'm really, honestly, really powerfully. And I said, well, Lord, I want a figure. And he said, 50. So I go back to the shop and I said, I'll give you 50. No, I can't sell it for 50. He said, because that's nearly what I paid for it. Why did you pay nearly 50 quid for that? Anyway, I said, at 59, and I did buy it. And then I got it home and I thought, well, three hours. Got a reflector in it, you know, it reflects the glory of God. Three strings, three strings. I, I, I made up an excuse why I should buy it, you know. I get a text from Amy, my friend Amy. I've been in the field looking at a young stag for two hours. And there's a stag, oh, I'm on a trail now. So I bought this and I took it home. And um, I didn't have to do anything to that one. And I have played it live since, and, and, it, and it was really great. Is it unique? It's totally unique. It's not totally unique. <laughs> ah. Now, this is not since working well. Um, where's your hat? And um, it's not unique. I discovered that in America, three string guitars are really massive. And you can even now go onto Amazon and buy a three string guitar bridge. It's a really big thing. It's like, I, I know a lot about music, I didn't know anything about three string guitars and what they do. And there's YouTube clips on how to play, and you can have them on all different open tunings. And, and that's why it works 75 quid for it, because it's got an amazing pickup in it. So it's like pickup and strings. I won't bore you about that. So that's number two. So that's number two. Number two. I can make these personals. I have for Super Creep. So I thought, I'm going to make something out of a wine box. So the first thing I did was I opened a wine box. It's a wine box. Still open, is it? I keep the sandwiches in there. Well, actual fact, my chocolate biscuits, but don't tell the wife. Right. You're going to keep on wondering why he's keeping buying these wine boxes. <laughs> so, um, so um, I get this, um, this idea. I'm going to make something unique <laughs> so for the day, unique. Because um, I'm unique, you're unique, you're like, everybody's unique. I'm going to make something unique. So what can I make? Well, I play the mandolin. A violin is like a mandolin, but it's without frets. I can't play the violin, because I can't find this note. But I can play a violin and I felt it. So I had this really old 1865 violin made in Scotland, which was rubbish because somebody stuck it together with super glue. So I took it all apart, took the neck off, fretted it, there you go, put it on the white box, put brass on it. What do you notice the brass? It's got two keys. I got that in a shop in, in, in uh, uh, antique shop in Henley, and there's a mirror behind it, reflector like the other one, keys for the kingdom. So it's got keys for the kingdom and um, I will quickly just play you a note on it because it's quite a nice note. But it's um, so when you're playing with a group, you want something that sometimes can cut through, you know, above all the other instruments. about this is it's a wine box and if you notice it's the back of a guitar of a violin it's got a cut out on either side doesn't it so that you can get the bottom string and the top string a wine box is narrow isn't it I didn't have a clue got it because you know there's all the detail you see so I bought this pickup and stuck it in and that's so that's I call that what do you think I call it the bandolin 
because it's a violin. It's quite a nice sound, isn't it? So that's that. That was number one. You wouldn't think it was a just a wine box, would you? No. No, you wouldn't. And if you heard it, right. So that was number, that was number one. So I thought, great. What's the name next? I'm intrigued by these next ones. Right. So the next one. What's unique next? So I've always been fascinated by David. And it's and it, and it's and it's not it's David. King David. In the Old Testament, David with his lyre. Yeah. One of the stories in the Old Testament. I don't know if this feature, this is a bit of a beast. So this is um so I want I want to make a ten string lyre, but I want to make a ten string lyre that's a bit different because I'm a guitarist, you know. So what do I do? So I went into Henley and I bought this this quite nice old Spanish guitar for thirty quid in a in an antique shop. There it is. And I put another neck on it so that it gave me four strings. So a ten string lyre is what David played. This is the traditional. Um, ancient instruments, 4,000 years old. The idea, this is 4,000 years old. The Egyptians had them, I've got all kinds of it. Somebody's actually, somebody's mother got a book on biblical musical instruments and gave it to them to give it to me. I haven't got the book yet, but God told them to do that, and I haven't had the book yet, so this is just my own design. So this is, so you've got. Now you've got to realise there's been something that's happened to you. OK? 
okay, something's happened to me. I've been taken to the Royal Box to have an emergency operation. Boom, right? So I cannot go anywhere. I'm stuck. Hmm? Wood. Beach. Better beach wood. It's a fork from it was a spoon, wooden spoon, and I turned it into a fork. This is on video, so go back and look at it and let the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Even one yeah. point set. It's in C and you play it. Robert said, then I adjust it to another note and you can play with other people. Yeah. Very important. Just us to be in community. Very important. Play with each other. See, it, there's, there's, there's a thousand things you can get out of this. Right, so by then, I've been taken to the Royal Palace. Sorry, let's see. Sorry, you didn't see that. <laughs> Trust my lovely assistant. <laughs> yeah. It'll be right, it's quite, it's quite tough. Um, so the next thing is, I had to go to the Royal Park to have an operation on my back and I had a massive hole in my back, two inches long, half an inch down by an inch deep. And I was stuck at home. And I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go anywhere. This is when I started making these instruments because I couldn't go. I have to go to the doctor and go. Kevin picked me up from the hospital this morning after I got it packed. So I couldn't go anywhere. So God got me in my shed and I could only do light things. And I wanted something to take my mind off the pain and all the rubbish and all that. So I decided to start making music. So, I could walk about, and when I walk to the hospital or the doctor in the morning, I would come back and I would think, what am I going to make next, Lord? What am I going to make next? So, the next thing I made was that. And this is all in the process of about five, six, five weeks, four weeks. So, this is really like we're stepping up all the time. God stepping up all the time. When you step out with God, I want to say, when you step out of God and start trusting Him, He starts up in Him. Thank you. Thank you, Logan. Don't you want to get it to? No, no, there we go. Right. So, the next step is, I'm in a, I wander around and I wait for the Lord to give me an ins, you know, inspiration, inspiration. And uh, nothing happens. <laughs> and I'm in, a, I'm in a charity shop in Henry. And I thought, oh, that's a lovely copper tray. Really old. How much is it? Nine pounds. I'll buy that because I like the copper drain. There it is. And uh, I thought it just sat in my workshop and I was meditating and thinking, what should I do? Well, why don't I make a three string guitar? Why don't I put that together? So, um, where we have that? so the next thing was, how am I going to make that? And what's that going to say? Right. So, the thing I want to say about this is that, that God's been giving me sermons as I've been doing this, little things to say. Uh, and, um, so, and been adapting things as I've been making them. So 
this beautiful thing. So, got the tone controls, how you work, how, where everything went. It was a right, right on journey. And then, and then it wasn't really making much of a noise. Acoustic, I thought, oh, I want to be able to, so I turned down the, turn down the volume of the tone. I wanted to be able to record it acoustically as well, because it's got quite a nice metal sound, a bit like a sitar. And I turn it around. So, I had the back of the violin left over. Ah, what's the back of the violin about? It's the sound board for the violin. And between the top of the violin and the bottom of the violin, there's a sound post, which transfers the sound from the arch top to the back, and it resonates and it produces the volume. The violin is signed by a bloke in Scotland and still signed up in here, 1865. I took the sound post out and I used it for various other things. And I had a little bit left on my balance table and it fits exactly between the top of there and the bottom. So it's got a sound post like the violin. And so, what happens when we create service and we do things with the cross? We create this beautiful harmony between everything. We make a sound, but it's very gentle. So when I unplug this, it's very gentle, it's a very gentle sound. So, service. Now also, what do you notice about copper? Do you know anything about copper? It's a soft. Hmm? It's a soft. It's a soft metal. Yeah. Where do they use it a lot of? In? Why do they use it in? Because copper, silver and gold kill bacteria in 90 minutes. Right? So when you know the silver, so, you know, people used to eat with silver, silver, we used to wash out because the silver killed the back. You know, you would go to hospitals and old places, there would be like a brass handle on the door. The brass kills the bacteria. Stainless steel doesn't. It's rubbish compared with brass. So, what does the copper do? The copper kills the bugs. Get it? The copper kills... So, naturally, you know, I could get washed up on this. It's really good. <laughs> All right, and I've got a little bird on the top there, which is all part of the decoration. So, that's that one. So that is number four. Yes, that's that one. And then we're on to the last, but not least. Now, that's also reflective. Can you see it reflects? So we reflect Christ's glory. And we reflect, so when I'm, when I'm playing that in somewhere, and you're all in it, do you get it? You're all in the reflection on the instrument. So I can polish up before I go, pray, polish, pray, polish, pray, polish, polish my prayers, turn up, and you're all, you're all seen in the front of the instrument if I take my hand off. Isn't that lovely? You're all part of it. Do you see how God works this all together? I mean, there's loads more I can say, but I'm going to keep it short. Right, next thing, I'm in Monitor wandering around, and I'm in a, in a charity shop again, because all these things are made out of junk. I want to tell you, they're all unique, but they're all made out of junk. Well, things that people have given away, that people have sold. Didn't want. Didn't want. They didn't want. So, it's redeemed. So, you want that guitar. So, you want that tray. So, you didn't. Well, so, you didn't want those things. But they're different. See, these are the things that the Lord has shown me to make. So, you didn't want the wine box. So, you didn't want the old violin. I was trying to sell it to someone. That, that was amazing. Right. So, here we go. What's this about? Right, so they're all called different names. This is called a tray caster. I don't forget what I call that. Um, but this one, and that's a vandalin. This is a ukebella. <laughs> no, it's a ukebella. It's a ukebella. Isn't that nice? This is quite special. So, I bought this ukulele because it was five quid and it was a bit broken. And then I went around and I bought this, these bellows, five pounds a money in the charity shop. They were made in India, you know, you know a, a copy. And, a, and once again, it's got a nice bit of brass on it. And if you read the Bible, I hope you do read about the gates, the brass images. So, we've got a nice 
image on the back here, and this time it's of a glass blower. Three, three people, three again, three strings, three holes, three holy, three, three people in heaven. Oh, it's about the Holy Spirit. And we've got here a man blowing, another man shaping, and another man, uh, uh, one man turning, another man shaping. And we're talking about heat again. We're talking about heat and air and blowing. Heat, air, and blowing. I didn't choose that. God knew that was there. God knew that somebody didn't want it. So I set about. I took. I took the poor little ukulele. Took it apart, remade it into the shape of the bellows. Fiddled about with it. Fiddled about with it. And now we have a ukulele. So. <laughs> Spirit of the Lord is on me, it's on you. 
because he anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, it will be proclaimed in the way you are. He sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoner. It will still be done in the manner of who you are, with the sound that you give. The recovery of sight to the blind, to set the oppressed for and free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. The tune of the music that is made will be specific to you, and the power that's gone before you, so actually the Holy Spirit has gone before you, so the sound that you make resonates into the situation you move into, so God, the love of Jesus, can be tasted and seen. I just want to say something. That Jude had a thing a while ago about being out of the box. Do you remember? Yeah. Jump out of the box. Jump out of the box. Out of the box. Yeah. Let me pray. Father, I thank you that you've given us lots of insights. I thank you for the creativity that you've given to Robert in a time when he was laid low, Father, physically unable to do many things. But in that space, a desert space, if you want, you created. Such some wonderful things, Father God, that we know will be used in different places and bring a, a blessing for you. So enable us to be like that, instruments used by you to share the love of Jesus. Praise you and thank you.